Hi folks, this is my Shaper Origin CNC router. It has a feature uh, that's been out for about a year called Auto Pass. I have not yet activated Auto Pass on the Shaper Origin. Um, big reason for that is it costs two hundred dollars to use Auto Pass, um, and it doesn't really change the core functionality of the tool. It's still going to make the same sorts of cuts and be able to do the same sorts of projects. To justify $200, it has to be $200 more enjoyable to use because of AutoPass. But fortunately, Shaper has a free trial. I'm going to activate the free trial. If I like it based on the, um, the trial using it, then I'll spring for the $200. I'm going to demonstrate AutoPass by cutting a couple of mortises for Festool dominoes. I'll cut one with the traditional method, not using AutoPass then activate auto pass and cut a second one. I'm setting up the uh, cuts here by just clamping a board level with the top of my work table. Then I'll use shaper plate to place the uh, mortises in the proper position. I've put pencil marks where I want the two mortises. Plates has a little arrow for alignment. You can see it right there. And um, plate also has a grid set up on it. So the center of that, where that mark is, is zero on the grid, on the x-axis. The uh, end of that little um, alignment plate that I just retracted is minus 50 on the y-axis. So I know the edge of that board is now at minus 50 on the y-axis, and my mark is at zero on the x-axis. I want the mortise center to be 12 millimeters in from the edge of the board, so I'm going to set that mortise at minus 38. Just so I'm clear on that, since the edge of the board is at minus 50 and I want the mortise to be at 12 millimeters from the end of the board, uh, 50 minus 12 is 38, so I know that my mortise center is going to be uh, minus 38. The file for the mortise is just downloaded from Shaper. It's already available on Shaper Hub, and I can just drop it in using those coordinates. Here's the traditional method. I've got a timestamp on this to show real time. It ended up taking me uh, three minutes and 20 seconds, I believe. So every time I do a pass, it's an eighth of an inch. And so I'm having to retract, tell it, okay, now you did an eighth, now do a quarter, now do three eighths, now do a half, and so on. So there's a lot of button pushes and a lot of time to uh, enter those different levels. To cut the next mortise, since I've already got it um, set up on the plate, all I've got to do is move that plate over to my next pencil mark. I don't have to re-enter the um, data for the mortise. That's already um, in there. It'll just put it in the new position. Here I've activated Auto Pass, and this is showing me, uh, I don't have a timestamp on this, and I filled it out. It actually took me like, I think, two and a half minutes just to figure out the menus on Auto Pass. Uh, but it's the first time I did it. I, I literally had not looked at these menus before I taped this. Um, so all I'm doing here is trying to figure out how do I tell it that I don't want a roughing pass of 25 one thousandths. I just want a roughing pass of five one thousandths. And it, after a little bit of fiddling around, including looking at the help menu, I figured out how to do that. It, it's, it's actually quite intuitive. It just took me a while because I hadn't used it before. Anyways, I have it set up now to do auto pass the exact same cuts I did manually before. I also put a timestamp on the auto pass and it ended up taking me, I think, a minute and 40 seconds, so about half the time. And there's only one button push, literally one button push at the start. And, um, and that's all you have to do. There's the two mortises and the uh, tenons fit just fine in them. All right, well, that indeed was more enjoyable to cut that second mortise. The mortises are identical. Recall with this first one, I had to push, I don't know how many buttons, I didn't count them, but it took me, uh, you know, 20 or 30 button pushes, maybe more than that. And it took a lot more time because every time I did a pass, I had to retract it, um, you know, get my new depth, plunge it back in there. So it took quite a while to do that one. This one was much faster. Once I had those... Um, 
uh, settings in AutoPass, and, and you saw me do it for the first time ever. I mean, I had no experience setting those AutoPass settings. It still only took me a couple of minutes to set those. Once I had it in there and said, okay, I want to cut that mortise, it was a one button push. I just said cut and just followed the path around. It automatically plunged it and kept plunging it deeper and deeper on each pass. It automatically did the uh, finishing pass, and then it even automatically retracted at the end when everything is done. So it was pretty impressive. Now, when I cut the rest of the mortises for the rest of the boards, I've got another, I don't know, 12 or 14 uh, mortises to cut for the rest of my dominoes. I'm not gonna have to re-input that auto pass information again. I'm just gonna set up the mortises here with the plate and tell it to cut. So it's gonna save me quite a bit of time. Um, probably right there, I'm convincing myself to spend the $200 you know, for these repeated cuts where there's no extra programming time after you've programmed it for the first one, um, you know, that's gonna be a nice time saver. Uh, but I don't have to decide yet. There's a 14 day free trial and I'll just, you know, I'll let the 14 days run out and then decide if I wanna plunk down the 200 bucks. Anyways, uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please like it and I invite you to subscribe to my channel. There's more woodworking stuff and you know, you'll probably see some other stuff from around the ranch. We're up here in Steamboat Springs, Colorado at about 7,000 feet of elevation. And so we just show some other stuff we're doing around on the ranch in, in addition to woodworking, you know, like dealing with the cows and the horses and the snow removal and all that good stuff. So um, once again, hope to see you back here soon.